Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This is Joe with the Local Search Association, and I'd like to welcome all of you to LSA's webinar series. Today's webinar is titled Local or National, Big or Small, Why You Need a Mobile Campaign Now, and will be brought to you by our guest presenters, Heather and Shannon from UpSnap. With that, let's get started. Over to you, Heather. Thank you, Joe, and thanks for joining, everybody. Um, I wanted to start with just some statistics, which I'm sure everybody on the line has been reading and seeing all the different mobile statistics and enormous growth opportunities um, that the mobile um, field you know, has at, at this current time. But I thought these were really um, some newer stats that I saw that were really compelling and wanted to share them. Um, last year's mobile traffic, so in 2013, the, uh, mobile traffic was 12 times that the entire internet traffic in the year 2000. 70% um, of all mobile searches result in an action with, within one hour. And interestingly, though not surprisingly, 91% of people keep their phone within three feet of themselves 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Um, I know myself that my iPhone is the first and last thing that I look at. It sits on my bedside table. It's the, like, the first and last thing that I look at every single day. You can't get much more in tune and more personal or engaged with, the, with consumers than via the phone, uh, mobile phone. Um, I also just read last week, over the weekend, that 50% of all um, media consumption is mobile, which is huge. And you know, we'll share some statistics as far as the avenue or the advertising spend. But right now, this year, it's projected at about 10%, with again 60% of people's time being uh, consumed or consumption being mobile. So that represents a huge opportunity as marketers for us to to get a hold of that revenue. Well, and, Heather, and then also, as, you, as you stated also with the 70% of mobile searches result with action in an hour, if any of our clients or um, the folks listening on the campaign are having success on desktop, typically a desktop search um, takes up to a month to result in action. So the immediacy of mobile really plays into um, the fact that people have it in their hand, they're on the go, and if they're using it to find something, they act immediately. So that investment can turn into immediate revenue right away for the client. So it's, it's it's a fantastic stat, and anyone doing desktop that's having success should absolutely look at mobile as a source. All right, thanks, Shen. One other stat I just thought was interesting, and, and again, speaks to the, the fact of how, how personal and how intimate a, a mobile phone can be for a consumer. Um, a, the Boston Consulting Group recently did a survey, and they said that 77% of people said that they'd rather give up chocolate than give up internet access for a, a year. And I think it was 10% said they'd give up their car. So, you know, people are extremely attached to their mobile devices. Um, and so, like, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to, to constantly be in front of your audience, your target audience, 24-7. Um, the next slide, again, some statistics. There's now, this year, more mobile devices than PCs. And there's not just more mobile devices, but people, 31% of consumers are claiming that they use, they prefer to use their mobile as their primary means of going online. Um, so we're seeing that the PCs, as, you, as I'm sure many of you know, um, are really losing market share to these mobile devices. Um, other, interestingly, the third bullet point I thought was very interesting in that half of all local searches are performed on mobile devices. And I know myself, just when I'm, if I'm at home and I'm looking for a local business, I will turn to my iPhone every time before I would power up my laptop. And that's mostly because of the intuitiveness of, of a mobile device. Um, I just read another article somewhere that said, and I really couldn't agree more, that mobile is built on intuitive user experiences. So it's making things easy for consumers. It's remembering, it's knowing where you are. Um, but, you know, geography-wise. It's also knowing what your interests are by, by past behavior or, or recent searches that you may have done. So it's just myself, if, like I said, if I'm looking locally, I will always go and turn to the, the iPhone before, to order a pizza versus powering up, like I said, my laptop. Um, this is some statistics on what we found at Upsnap. Um, if you have a mobile a coupon that you're, especially if it's a deal or offer or coupon that you already have and published and are using in other media efforts, um, they mobile coupons are typically have a 10 time redemption rate than print. So if you're seeing really good redemption rates um, with other avenues, then you'll see you can expect to see 10 times higher redemptions than mobile. 
Um, you know, Americans are still very price sensitive. Our economy, although many say is out of the recovery, it's still, in my opinion, it's still coming out of, re um, you know, it's still recovering, I should say. And so people, and I know myself, are looking for deals um, all the time in coupons. So if you have, like I said, something that's already you're already using in other um, media, then definitely take advantage and use it on, on mobile as well. Um, you don't have to cut into margins and do a Groupon model type thing, but again, something if you have a 30% or your, your client has or advertiser has a, a coupon um, hold, for example, I just every time I get, if I get a 30% off instead of 15 or 20, I'm going to the store. Um, it's another way to just build loyalty too and, and repeat business. Um, and speaking to, to the intuitiveness, and to, make, and to make things simple for consumers, 47% uh, of mobile consumers said they prefer that retailers actually send coupons to them when they're in or near the store. So again, the technology is there. Um, we know, we mar mobile marketers know where a consumer is at any given point. So to take advantage of that technology and make sure that you are doing and, and serving a consumer's needs and wants um, is something that you, should, you definitely need to take into consideration. And then there's a statistic at the bottom that 50 million consumers will use mobile coupons this year. That's from eMarketer recently, and it's, it's just growing every year we see these numbers. In terms of performance, so what we found, and I, I kind of spoke to earlier, is that mobile ads perform four to five times better than online or PC ads. Um, and that's across many different metrics, so brand favorability, awareness, purchase intent, um, E-commerce e is, is growing as more consumers are comfortable transacting over the web, um, and there are more more people. In fact, are more comfortable um, with mobile and, and transacting, and making purchases on mobile. In fact, 72% of people who own tablets have said that they make purchases via their tablet on a weekly basis. Um, so that's another tablet inventory is something is something we'll speak to throughout the, the presentation. Um, but that's another whole area. When, when we say mobile, don't just think you know mobile phones. Um, mobile uh, tablets are also a very huge area of op of opportunity to have a very different strategy put in place. People's mindset on their tablets are, is very different in a lot of cases than um, when they're on their mobile phones. A lot of times they're out and about looking. Um, on the go and need things immediately, where a tablet, as you probably know, is more similar to PC and that a lot of more research is done. Um, leisurely, when you're sitting watching TV, um, there are a lot of times consumers are also on their tablets. And so taking into consideration a strategy for each device, each of those different devices is, is very important and key. Um, I, also thought, I also wanted to just point out that the revenue per mobile click is almost double that of a PC click. Um, again, it's, I would think that's due to the fact of this, and you're going to hear me probably get tired of me saying it, but I think it's due to the fact that uh, mobile is so intuitive. It was built around that concept. So I don't, I'm not very surprised that the conversion is higher and the revenue um, transaction is also higher. And by 2018, a half of today's smartphone owners will use mobile wallets as their preferred payment method. Again, just speaking to the fact that um, as consumers become more comfortable making purchases on the web and over mobile, um, we'll do, the, the technology will, will refine itself and advance so that it makes things easier for consumers to, to engage and interact. Okay, so I just went through a bunch of different statistics and numbers. Um, the point is that nothing, no medium, has ever um, in our history taken off like mobile has. Um, it took radio what, 25 years, I think, to reach the same audience um, that mobiles reach now in just two years. So now is the time. Um, I always shudder when, I, when I'm speaking with prospects or clients that say, you know, oh, oh yeah, we're going to consider that in the next year or two, we're going to go really heavy. You know, it's now. The time is now to get in. There's, your competitors are there. Um, like I said, this year, uh, 2014, this mobile is expected to reach about 18 um, billion dollars in mobile advertising spend. It will double, it's projected to double in just two years. And then by 2018, uh, the mobile advertising spend is projected at over $58 billion, which is three times this year's spend. 
this year, too, I just pointed the second bullet point in the middle. I wanted to point out that um, we had said in, again, the intro of this, uh, this webinar that mobile is, is growing significantly up 83% this year to 18 billion, but it still just represents, like I said, 10% of marketers and advertisers' media uh, budget. And so, but interestingly, that 10% that is, is, is surpassing what advertisers are now spending in radio, newspapers, and magazines, making it second to TV, um, or third, I'm sorry, third to TV, then online, and now mobile. Okay, so um, again, with mobile being built around this intuitive user experience, we can now, as marketers, market to the user. We don't have to say we're, gonna mar we're, we're marketing B2B or B2C. Um, we are marketing and not just one-to-one, -one, but many-to-many. -many. So we're using multiple device devices and can use multiple devices to reach any audience that we want to reach. Um, and 90% of people, you may have seen the stat, that 90% of people move between devices when they're considering an, a, a purchase or trying to accomplish some sort of goal. Um, and that could be you know, smartphones, TVs, tablets. Um, those devices are, are not exclusive of each, of each other. You need to have a strategy that, that has a, a separate strategy, excuse me, for each of those screens or devices because not, no one screen has more than 20% of market share. That was of course a, a statistic I saw by Modify. And you know, to engage consumers across all screens, you really need to focus in on a multi-screen strategy approach that has a consistent brand image, but also takes into consideration the device, the technology, the consumer's mind frame or path to purchase. Um, and, and like I said, have a separate, um, but similar in terms of branding, of course, um, but a separate um, uh, message based on all of these factors. So in order to monetize mobile, okay, so whether you have advertisers that are big or small or national or local, regional, if any business can and should have a mobile um, advertising strategy. UpSnap offers solutions for SMBs. Um, for as, low as, as little as $100 a month, a small to medium-sized business can get uh, launched on a, you know, have a mobile campaign launched and start reaching their audi target audience. Um, we also work from t with tier one brands that, that are spending millions of dollars in mobile. So we can help small, mid-sized, large brands, any business who's interested in, in getting into mobile, we have solutions um, that are focused on results. Um, and to get started, really, there's three things. So you, of course, have to identify your objectives and what success criteria you want to measure or, or KPIs. Secondly, you know, what you're who, who is the audience you're trying to reach? And then, of course, thirdly, what is that message then? And it obviously might be a couple different messages based on the audiences that you're trying to reach. And just wanted to point out that it's not necessarily, uh, it's not necessary, I'm sorry, to have a mobile optimized site. Um, we offer solutions that can develop um, static you know, landing pages that act as a, a mini mobile site, um, and especially for those clients who are looking for phone calls or form fills or um, any other um, call to action. We can help work with advertisers and ad agencies to, to develop um, interim plans and, and work around somebody not having a mobile site. Well, and that goes right to, Heather, your point about not needing a mobile site and what are your key engagement um, desires when you have a mobile campaign. If you're looking for somebody to call you, put a click-to-call option on your mobile ad. Um, when they go to the website, we sometimes lose track of them and people are on the go and they may have a phone call come in, they may have a text come in, they may have somebody talking to them, and it interrupts their path to purchase, where if you have that immediacy that mobile allows for with the click-to-call or the phone number on the iPad um, ad, they can engage immediately from a landline. So mobile really allows, without a mobile website, for you to engage with your target audience when you want to get in front of them. So you can geofence it, you can day part it so that you're getting calls during your business hours and you're reaching people in your local area. And even national brands, a lot of their campaigns are geofenced because they want to reach people within a certain radius of their retail location. So mobile really provides that immediacy of action, and a mobile site is not required. In fact, if engagement is the number one objective, 
sometimes we don't put a click to website on a campaign even when a national brand has that available. Right. Thanks, Jenna. Okay, so I said there are three steps, and the first, of course, is, again, defining what your campaign objectives are and the KPIs. So is it branding that you're looking for? Do you maybe have emerging markets that you really want to pound? Um, is there a new line of business that you want to that you want to you know generate more awareness for? Are you looking to do some conquesting and, and steal some market share away from some some competitors? Um, but those are branding type campaigns, and, and I'll get into each of these three different types um, in a little more detail in the, in the coming slides. Um, but then, of course, there's engagement. A lot of people might call it direct response, but we prefer to call it engagement because it's it's really engaging consumers across whatever or in whatever it is that advertiser is looking to do. So whether it's a form fill or, you know, click form a, fill out a form for a free in-home consultation for home service or, you know, direction, click for directions to your to the nearest retail store. Um, like Shannon said, phone calls. Um, if you're looking to even for Facebook likes or reward programs, different types of, um, um, I think I thought, lost my thought track there, or coupon downloads, I'm sorry. Um, so that's that's they're the engagement um, type campaigns, and then and then we have the application download campaigns for those brands who are looking to really promote um, their app, and and also we can the cool thing with that is that we can work on a CPI um, and and only charge advertisers when their application is downloaded and in fact used. So it's not just downloaded, but somebody actually went in and, and opened it and used the app, and also um, it's. Pretty cool to say that you could also track and look at what revenue has come in as a result of, of a consumer having downloaded and using a uh, your app. Um, so that's the third main type of campaign uh, that, that we offer. And so getting in, like I said, to a little, little bit more detail with each of these types. So for those branding or awareness um, campaigns, these are the different tactics. So it's not just um, really uh, if it, if I'm sorry, <laughs> um, what we can do with with the branding is really deploy advanced targeting to make sure we're hitting the right audience at the right time. Um, but we can also bring in things like weather-based targeting. So, you know, for those advertisers, if you are a roofing company and you want to look at where weather is expected to, you know, or expected to have a major storm, we can see where winds have reached over a certain um, speed or rainfall has reached a certain level and make sure we're pushing message, our message hard in those areas. Um, you know, for roof repair or something along those lines, um, or insurance if you want to have push insurance um, uh, claims or new sign-ups. Um, there is context or behavioral targeting, of course, which also looks at how consumers what they're what they're doing currently, how they've searched in the past, different keywords or phrases that they've used. So we can really, really get get re, um, really detailed and refined on how we target your audience. And also, really, in these types of the branding campaigns, we're looking at a CPM buy. So it's not performance-based, but what we're doing is guaranteeing eyeballs. So the view is the value, is what we're saying. Um, they should not, these types of branding campaigns, it's very important up front to make sure your advertiser knows that these should not be measured um, the same way you would measure an aware, uh, engagement uh, campaign. It's really just, again, understanding that the views do have value, that your goal is to basically enhance your brand's awareness or steer away market share and or steal away market share from competitors. And so those views um, you know, have, to be, have to be understood that, that there's value, inherent value in just, in just getting the views. Of course, the goal of any campaign is to, at the end of the day, generate revenue for your advertiser. Um, but if you are new to a certain market and you and you have other challenges to overcome, um, you know branding is 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 key. And a lot of times we'll do um, sometimes hybrid type account of campaigns that are focused on you know branding as well as engagement. This is Shannon, and I'm going to jump in here real quickly. So an example on um, the branding campaigns, whether you're large business business or small, when you think about weather, think about how that changes the types of products and services that your customers are buying. Um, we've been talking with a um, gas station provider nationwide, and they're thinking that you know when it starts to rain, it's a great time to push windshield wiper fluid, get people in, offer free windshield wiper fluid, and then ultimately they'll buy other products and services. Um, the nice thing too about mobile 
is with the kind of precision targeting that you can do from both a location as well as a trigger or an event and a profile, like I want to reach women over 40 that are in-market car buyers that have children because I want to drive minivan sales. That's something we can do, and it can be very precise because every device has data associated with it, and it allows us to go beyond what you can do on TV when you think you're getting the right audience. On mobile, you can be very precise in your targeting and really communicate that message specifically to who you want to reach with no wasted eyeballs. So in a branding campaign where you're where you're seeing the brand awareness on both TV and possibly newspaper, mobile gets you in front of that exact customer that you're wanting to reach based on the data that you put in place. And then you can pull levers to pr promote specific products based on an event or a time of day. You can push a lunch message mm -hmm. around lunch. You can push a soup message around a cold day. Um, there are just different things that you can do on mobile that can be immediate and cause action immediately that is not available in other forms of media. Thanks, yep, thanks, Jen. Thanks. Okay, so the branding was the first. Now we're talking about a little bit about engagement type campaigns. And again, it's really um, what is your objective as the advertiser? How do you want to engage your consumers? And you know, a lot of times what we do is recommend trialing several different tactics. Um, you know, one that maybe let's trial a click through to the site to, to fill out a form and a different tactic for the same advertiser would be, let's just drive calls to their call center um, and see really what resonates best and then tailor your messaging um, accordingly. It's, it's really key um, and something I think we pride ourselves on as Upsnap is it's really key to just make sure that you're constantly re uh, monitoring your, the success and, and the performance of the campaign and making tweaks and optimizing in, in real time or as real time as, as you can get. Um, but having those different options and testing them out in different markets um, is, is really key. And there's also P4P or, or performance-based opportunities um, with engagement type campaigns that um, Upsnap has been part of actually in starting a lot of these campaigns having originated as a, as a, a call um, technology provider. We have always been re results-oriented, focused, super focused. So we will work with advertisers and, and agencies to develop campaigns. Um, and of course, if it's national, uh, the, the, there's a lot more playing field that we do, think room to work. So if a national advertiser is looking to drive phone calls, and we can, we can build a performance model where that advertiser is only paying for qualified calls and they choose, they work with us to decide, OK, what's the parameters we're going to put in place? Is it going to be a 60-second call they're built on? Is it going to be a, a 90-second we've gone? So you know, these are a lower risk oppor um, opportunity for advertisers to really um, you know, move towards where everybody wants to go as an advertiser, which is performance-based advertising only. Um, and of course, for local, it's a little bit different when we have a smaller uh, geography to work with. Um, most of the times, the P4P opportunities we're talking here is on a cost per click basis. Um, but that is another option. And again, it's, it's something that we offer um, in, the, in all of our campaigns. Uh, and then the third main type of, of campaign that we talked about was app downloads. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm hearing, I'm reading a lot about app downloads and how important it is that if you are a business, if you have an app, that it works well, that it's not just to say we have an app, um, but it has to actually be useful and something that a consumer is going to, um, you know, want to want to get on and either make their life easier or be fun for them or whatever it might be. But if it's just there as an app, it's not. It's probably not going to get much use. Um, but in terms of overall usage of consumers, 89% of all mobile use happens in app as opposed to just 11% on the mobile web. Um, 30 hours a month on average consumers are spending um, in apps. And so, and that's growing. I think this year's flip it through at about a 30% um, increase over, over last year. Um, and so the other thing is that conversion rates, what they found is conversion rates are, are up to 140% higher than mobile web. So in app, you're, you are more engaged, um, and so the conversion can be much higher. And downloads, I just thought this was a very a, a number that we, sh we, should all, we could all look at and appreciate. There were 76.9 billion um, app downloads projected for this year at $35 billion in sales. So 
um, most PNCs, as I think Shannon kind of spoke to a little bit in a second ago, will um, allow push notifications for um, for app users, and so you can really get in and re-engage with consumers on a one-on-one -on -one level basis um, by having the ability to you know push messages to push messages to your to your target audience, to your consumers who are on using your app. Um, there's over 100 billion push notifications that have been sent um, or, or projected to, have been, to be sent this year. So just, again, another way to really, and I, I feel like I've said it a lot, but it's, engage, it's all about engaging consumers. And this is a great avenue and opportunity um, if you have, like I said, an app that is, some, is interesting or, or useful. Okay. Um, what, what this graph or this page really shows is that location data isn't everything. You know, everything that you hear lately is, is about we can do location-based targeting. That's not the whole picture. So you need to also consider and incorporate, obviously, demographics, points of interest, behavioral patterns, the device, things we've talked about be, um, before. And what we do at Upsnap is um, we start with the advertisers' data and who they feel their target audience is, but then we, we follow the data. So by providing you know, two to three weeks into launch a rich data um, audience profile report and really digging into who's responding to our campaigns, we can see you know, exactly who it is who's responding and tweak our, our delivery, our messaging um, accordingly. And there's one campaign that I actually ran um, not that long ago where the advertiser said, you know, 50% of our, our target audience is Hispanic. And, and when we launched the campaign and ran after a few weeks the, the rich data um, audience profile report, we found that only 3% or so, less than 5% of, of people that were, you know, responding were Hispanic. So what that did as, a, as an agency at the time when I was working at the agency was say, um, we can, uh, this will give us an opportunity to launch a separate Laser focused campaign on uh, that focused specifically towards Hispanics, and that gave um, the agency revenue, obviously the, the mobile provider, and then but also helped, of course, with the with the advertiser. And they were very surprised um, that the initial campaign wasn't reaching what they thought it would reach, but but also you know excited about the fact that we were able to bring that information to them and then make a recommendation to you know, launch a separate campaign that was geared specifically in, the, in its delivery, in its message um, to that target audience of the, the Hispanics that they were looking to, to reach. Um, and so for the, the, we just went through the different objectives, the different types of audience, and then third, as I said, is, is what kind of content um, you should put into your mobile campaign. And what we find, as I as mentioned before, is that the coupons really do work best if you have an offer or a special offer. Everybody likes to save a few bucks. So coupons work really, really well. Um, and different images, um, definitely if you have images, very specific logo or um, high awareness of a logo or, or um, that you're using other images that you're using in other media, we should for sure try to tie that in, um, space permitting, of course, into, into the mobile ad. Um, we don't recommend, you know, loading your ad so that there's no white space. It needs to be, um, you know, look look nice enough that it's not completely cluttered. Um, babies work well or connecting with emotions. So babies, puppies, messages that it revolve around doing the right thing. Um, emotion seems to really work when you're when you're um, launching and using mobile mobile advertising. Any types of new store openings um, or or new offerings. Um, we sh you should for sure put that in there if it's, again, space permitting. Tablets, again, you can do more, obviously, with tablets because the screen is larger. So the message and the, the creative on the tablet should be different um, than what you're doing on phone. You may as well take advantage of the space and, and get as much information in front of your audience um, as possible. But, but of course, you know, for best practices, keep it simple. So strong call to action is, like Shannon said, it's calls you're looking for. Make sure you say, click here to call in your ad, in your banner ad. Um, brand name and your logo need to be you know, very apparent. Um, and um, the minimal, the least amount of text, 
that you can put on the banner, initial banner, the better. Um, focusing again on really um, strong call to action with a single, a single solution. So if it's in some cases where I had said previously, you know, we, we're launching campaigns that give consumers an option to either click to fill a form out or click for call. Um, on the initial banner that the consumer is seeing, though, they're seeing a, a button that might say click for more information. And when they, the consumer clicks that, then they're brought to the larger full screen landing page, which gives them the option. So um, you know, definitely let the consumer know that what, they're, what it is you want them to do or would like them to do. Hey, Heather, I just want to jump in there real quickly on the, um, on the creative piece. At Upsnap, when we do a campaign with a banner ad, we back it up with a full page ad behind it, also called a landing page, so that um, if somebody clicks on a banner and by accident they have the opportunity to um, go back to what they were originally doing. But if they are interested, it creates something that we call a speed bump. It makes them engage again, so that if you are doing a click-to-call program, you're not getting calls where um, it was an accidental click, and we call them ghost calls, where it's the um, business person is going, hello, hello, and nobody's there, and it's floating around in somebody's purse or pocket. This really ensures that the customer is engaged by the time they get to the business. And so that landing page really creates additional information, confirms what the offer is, and requires an additional action on the consumer's part to engage with the business, ensuring that you're going to see a high conversion rate and a great engagement rate. Thanks, Shelly. Yep. Okay, and so after, uh, oh, I'm getting an echo. Can you guys hear me okay? I hope everybody's okay. That's better now. Um, lastly, or not, performance. So obviously you want to, after you're spending time in generating uh, or in establishing what your message is, who your audience is, what your objectives are, um, you want to make sure that you can measure it, right, and that you have full access to how a campaign is performing. Um, Ideally, your partner, and this is something Upsnap does, um, will give you 24-7 access. So you have real-time analytics at your, dis at your um, disposal. Um, and it's not just impressions and click-through rates that you'll get, but you'll actually be able to see by hour, as a chart for some of our screenshots from our dashboard, um, but you'll be able to see by hour the number of calls that were generated from your campaign. And if it's a, a pay for performance campaign, not only the number of calls, but the number of billable calls by hour. Um, you should be able to pull information such as coupon redemption, at, like I said, app downloads. And if, if, if you're interested, also the revenue associated with that app download. Um, total transparency, 24-7 um, access is, is crucial in keeping everybody accountable and just making sure that a campaign is running and delivering the best ROI possible. Um, and so for, for UpSnap, um, what, what I would say, and I'm, I don't know if anybody knows on the line knows, but I've come from the agency side for almost 20 years and recently joined the UpSnap team. Um, the reason I did is because I have a couple of factors, but most, first and foremost, um, I was a client for the last three years. And the service, the, the performance of the campaigns that I ran for my advertisers uh, was superior, was just very Great performance, so I'll leave it at that. Great performance, the reporting, the fact that I was able to get on and be able to see at any time how my campaigns were um, were running and to jump on the phone immediately. So it's relationships with um, our partners and with the UpSnap team that we have with our advertisers and our agencies. We work with you to deliver the best performance possible. We kind of view ourselves really as an extension of our advertisers' marketing department. So. We want to make sure, obviously, that what we're doing is working um, right alongside with you. So those are really, um, I don't know, if, Shannon, if you have anything else that you wanted to add on that. But no, no, I just, um, Heather, thank you for sharing that you were a client of ours for three years. It speaks volumes to um, the fact that, um, you know, we had a client want to join our team. And, you know, in summary, what we wanted to focus on is that location is part of having a good campaign but really understanding who your audience is and what your goals are is the most important. And at UpSnap, we really like to say that we deliver audiences, not sites. You can go out and you can buy Google and you, you can get on a specific app, but what we want to do is get you in front of the customer that, um, at the right place at the right time when they're ready to buy. And um, we define that based on household income, gender, um, 
we're even running a campaign right now for um, an ophthalmology um, group where we're looking at ophthalmology as an indicator. So they've purchased glasses online or they've researched LASIKs information online and that has been embedded into their device ID so we know they're a great target to receive this campaign. So the kind of laser precision that we can provide, we, we don't say, you know, we're going to get you on this specific site. We say we're going to get you in front of the person that's in your area that's most likely to buy from you. And that's what we feel is um, the most important thing because at the end of the day, it's about driving revenue for the business. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Absolutely. Shannon. And then, then this is, I guess, my, this is just my wrap-up slide, guys. So thank you for, for staying on. Staying and on. I, hope very I hope this was in, uh, informative for all of you. Um, but the key takeaways, as I listed here, really, it, now is the time for mobile. There, there is no time, better time than now. Um, to take to know your goal, your advertising goals, to, to determine how you will measure the success and how and make sure you're monitoring it uh, regularly, and of course to partner with a mobile partner um, that you can really trust. And um, I believe that without sounds like I said, and this will be my last plug, I promise. <laughs> um, our experience and success in the paper performance uh, realm is is like no other. Um, our data and analytics, we don't just say we collect the data, but we actually use the data and we're using it on a daily basis to optimize campaigns. Um, the transparency, like I said, in reporting, um, making us accountable. That, and the fact that we could be your, an extension of your marketing department and viewed as a, a trusted partner in long-standing relationship um, you know, is, 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 is something that you know, I, I valued tremendously when I was working on the agency side. And it's, not, it's something that you don't always find. So, um, something I pride ourselves on at UpSnap. So I think that is all I really have. My contact information is there on the right. Um, would love to talk with anybody offline. If there's anybody who's interested, please feel free to either email me or call me on my mobile. Um, and I would I'd love to talk strategies. Do we know the percentage of new customers that come through mobile? Um, so the percent of uh, new customers that come through mobile, um, with some of our national brands, we, we run something called an IVR, which is an interactive voice response system. And what that means in layman's terms is, thank you for calling Shannon's Beauty Salon. If you're a new customer, please press 1. If you're a current customer, please press 2. And when we look at the breakdown across verticals, across um, geographies, it can be um, around 50% are coming from mobile. And that would be on the low end. We've seen it as high as 70%. But 50% um, is pretty much what we see um, when we put that IVR in place. 50% of the calls will hit press 2, and 50% will hit press 1. It can vary by vertical and brand, but on average, it's around 50%. And again, for certain brands and verticals, we've seen it in the 70% range. So what are some of the challenges that agencies are facing as they're looking at mobile? Uh, I think it's, um, a lot of it is just not knowing exactly who they can partner with and what, you know, who offers what solutions or services. Um, and, and like I said, having come from the agency side, it was imperative for me to make sure that the partner, I, the, the platform or group that I partnered with had, had scale. So I wanted to be able to make sure I, if my advertiser is giving me X budget, I want to make sure I'm spending it. I don't want to have any leftover uh, budget sitting there. So my provider needed to bring volume um, that was quality uh, and that also w was able to, to be reported on in a pretty sophisticated manner. I mean, we're touting all the sophistication in targeting and, and what we can do with technology on mobile. They're not expecting to see an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the day that tells them what, their, what the campaign generated. So it's the, the reporting um, and that, that partnership, truly, not to sound hokey. I hope it doesn't. Um, but I, I, I believe and I know that's why, again, having partnered for three, the last three years um, was a result of, of strong partnerships and working together as a, for a common goal. And, and I know it probably does sound a little hokey, but it's true. <laughs> Okay, so another one that came in, how do you avoid the fat finger sy syndrome? If someone accidentally clicks, how do you know if they're engaged? It goes back to that landing page slide, and Heather, I don't know if you want to go back a couple slides, but um, when we run a campaign, um, a bulk of them we support with this, this full page ad. So you start out with a banner that we showed you on um, Create a Sample, 
and then somebody clicks on that, they go to a landing page. We can make sure that there's a back button available and they can go back to the original search before we actually put them into the call center or put them into you know, a website click. So when we're looking at a campaign, um, we're always looking at that secondary action. That's more meaningful for us than just maybe an initial click. It's what's that secondary action? Are they clicking for directions? Are they downloading the coupon? Are they making a call? That secondary action says to me it was beyond an accidental click because they had to click again. And that's how we, that's how we ensure engagement. How does a brand or an SMB go about designing their mobile ad? Do you have any tips or best practice advice? It's really about making sure that you've got messaging that's consistent across the different medias that you're using. Um, you can tell at a glance here pretty quickly the Geico ad. You see um, the, the pig in both their TV ads as well as their um, mobile ads. Um, you also see the Terminex brand, very prominent, that green. You know without even reading it that it's Terminex. The Starbucks, the beautiful green with the coffee cup, so close you can smell it. Walgreens, the W. That consistency across media is, is crucial. And then adjusting it for the fact that you've got a smaller screen size and you're trying to create some sort of media fee because of the mobile phone. Um, and then, of course, you know, leveraging the emotions and making sure that your, your messaging is clean and that what your message says is going to drive the action that you most desire. And we work quite a bit on partnering with um, brands. And um, with all of our SMBs, we're designing the ads for them. So you know, we pride ourselves in making sure that the campaign that we're putting out is going to drive the KPI that each and every one of our um, customers desires. What should an advertiser expect in terms of reporting? Well, that's going to vary by partner, um, depending upon who they pick. Um, at the very least, um, they should know that what they paid for, they got. So um, you know, our reporting um, is pretty deep and robust. Um, we provide real-time reporting. That's not, a, that's not available across all partners, but we can show you on a minute-by-minute on a -minute basis what's happening with your campaign. We're going to show you not only the eyeballs that are seeing your ad, but what's happening with your ad, what's that initial click-through rate, and then what most of our brands and um, SMBs care about most, what's that secondary engagement rate. And if it's a call, we can provide call logs, um, coupon downloads with apps. Um, app downloads is really um, exciting, and it's an area that we're focused on going into 2000. 15, because with an app download, you're seeing a higher conversion rate from a customer, you're seeing a higher spend level. And with an app, you can actually see when the customer downloads it that they open it, you can see what their purchase pattern is, and you can see, I spent $3 to drive this app download, and I've seen you know $2,000 in spend happening in that app. So you can actually track revenue, and then most of the terms and conditions around apps also allow for push messaging to engage, hey, Heather, you haven't been back for a month, we really... You know, we really want to see you. Here's a 10%, 20% off coupon. So really knowing that you're getting the engagement that you desire and that you're getting it in a timely manner and that there's accountability around what, what you purchase, you're actually getting. Thanks, Heather and Shannon, for conducting today's webinar. We really appreciate all the info. I also want to thank everyone for attending today. And just as a heads up, we have some exciting webinars coming up from companies like Bing, MapQuest, Como, and Local Market Launch. For more info on these, visit localsearchassociation.org slash webinars. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.